related conditions to MS. This has been a focus of the Rocky Mountain MS Center. So it's important to treat the right disease. I think this is kind of sometimes obvious, but I think sometimes it's the frustration of trying to find the right diagnosis. And my main point for this is to kind of say, hey, at the Rocky Mountain MS Center, we can help with some of these conditions. But the important part is that sometimes it's not to rush to a diagnosis, and sometimes why we ask quirky little weird questions. The main thing is if we treat the wrong disease, you're exposing yourself to, to side effects about the wrong medicine, and that's why being cautious about giving a diagnosis is important. There's a lot of different things that we look at. This is only a partial list of things that um, the immune system, when it goes awry, can affect. Our way of diagnosing MS um, involves a lot of little charts and algorithms. This is the latest criteria, but again, it's to try and help in a way simplify, but at the same time um, make that important diagnosis early. We're trying to diagnose MS earlier and earlier. So this is how long it used to take for MS to get diagnosed back in the 80s. You can see about half the patients took about almost 10 years or at least seven or eight years to get diagnosed. And that was kind of the conservative nature, kind of learning how to use MRIs and everything else into making a diagnosis. Now we can see that about half the patients can get a diagnosis of MS almost immediately. And it's important to diagnose early because hopefully we can prevent a lot of disease. So at two years, a big reduction um, from some of our studies. These are just related conditions. So ADEM is basically a one-time disease. So if we diagnose you with ADEM, and it can look a lot like MS, also a demyelinating condition, it implies that we don't have to treat you in the long term like we would for MS. NMO is a disease that affects predominantly the spinal cord and the eyes. So you can see enhancement of the right eye, big lesion in the spinal cord going all the way down. This used to be thought of as MS, actually an old disease. 19, or 1870, when this disease was originally described, uh, and the first patients associated with it. And we used to treat it like with our MS meds. In only 2004 did we start separating it out, and more importantly, start to recognize it as a distinct entity. Our new criteria for diagnosis of this condition came out in 2006, and the importance is that interference can actually make this condition worse. So we treat it very differently from MS, and trying to recognize it compared to MS is very important. Before, we didn't think that you could have brain lesions with NMO, but because of this new marker that we identified in 2004, now we can start saying, hey, brain lesions are very common in MS, and this is the criteria that we have now that incorporates a lot of this knowledge. Research keeps finding new diseases. In 2010, we identified clippers, a uh, very rare disease, uh, but it tends to produce these little tiny little spots of activity in the brainstem, and again, just a different disease that at some point used to be called MS or lupus or other other conditions. And again, it's trying to identify these conditions so we can treat them appropriately. Sarcoid is another one. Basically, lupus. Um, this is all the stuff that lupus can cause. When it affects the brain, it can cause all these things. So there's a lot of different things that, you know, that we look at and, and we'll ask and why it's important to ask about skin and vision and bladder. Um, all these other things when we're trying to diagnose what's been affected. Um, there's a condition called vasculitis that can affect the brain that causes stroke-like episodes, but again, it's driven by inflammation, and so in trying to identify these things early. The shots, the brain reason I bring this one up is sometimes these quirky questions that I ask about. So this is associated with genital and oral ulcers. So if somebody in MS starts asking you about these questions, that's what we're trying to fish out. And so there's a lot of quirky questions that we ask, but Hopefully they're for a reason, and it's to try and figure out if it might be related to some other weirder condition. All right, I'm done. You guys get a break now. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Alvarez.